Hi friends, this is Dipti and welcome to my channel Life Admin 365 and welcome to today's video. Today's video is meal prep video and it is part three of our Indian meal prep series. This video was supposed to be part four, but I decided to move uh, this in the line and push the part three to part four. So in total, our meal prep series is going to be a four part series and today is the part three of it. My original plan was to uh, record this meal prep uh, immediately after I did my major grocery haul in the beginning of March but unfortunately I was not able to do and it's been two weeks and I have already gone out uh, once more to buy fresh produce. So in this video, I'm going to share with you uh, how I prepped the veggies that I got recently and also a few veggies that I got um, in the last grocery haul. So that is the plan for today. Uh, typically, I do my meal prep either on Saturday, Sunday or on Sunday, Monday. But this meal prep I started doing on a Thursday evening, took a break overnight and then resumed it today, Friday evening and hoping to get everything done by the end of Friday. Uh, this weekend I have big plans to get back to my gardening. I haven't gardened in a very long time. It's all been almost a decade since I last grow my own veggies in the summer but this time I'm going to go back into the flow and uh, get back into my gardening game. Last time when I did, you know, I had support from my father-in-law. He was the one who helped me uh, build my garden, design my veggie garden and help me through the entire process. My in-laws were with us visiting in the summer. So, you know, that was a big help from them. But now, um, unfortunately, because of uh, COVID situation, they are not here, uh, but this year I have support from an amazing group of friends from my town. They are so dedicated. They are uh, rocking this game of home growing veggies and having their own veggie gardens uh, in summer as well as fall. So I've been really inspired by them. I have been, I've joined their group and they have been giving, you know, they are sharing all these wonderful tips and ideas. So I want to get back to that. Um, this week and I'm already a couple of weeks late. Most of them have already started doing their seeds. Their seeds have sprouted and I still have to <laughs> even begin with the sowing process. They say it's better late than never. So uh, that is what it is. So that's my plan for the weekend. I'm going to get back into the groove of uh, home growing vegetable and gardening. And if you guys are interested in watching that, do let me know in the comment section below so that I can uh, record a video in much details and share my failures and success with you guys. So I, I don't know what the outcome of this garden is going to be. I'm hoping um, that, you know, under the tutelage of these excellent uh, women gardeners, I will have a decent bounty. Uh, so let's see back to our meal plan and meal prepping yesterday I prepped a bunch of veggies that I got in the previous grocery haul so I prepped two heads of um, what is this <laughs> so <laughs> I prepped two heads of cap it's not cabbage <laughs> so I prepped two <laughs> anyways back to our meal planning and meal prepping for this upcoming week Yesterday, I prepped a bunch of veggies that I brought in my first grocery haul in the beginning of March. So I prepped two bunches of cauliflower, mushrooms, spinach, celery, onions, potatoes. So I boiled and crushed, peeled, crushed and stored them. And I also prepped that huge can of uh, crushed tomatoes. So I portioned them out in uh, several jars. Some I kept in my refrigerator for immediate use and the others I put them in my freezer for use at a later time. Today I'm going to prep veggies that I got a couple days ago. So I'm going to prep green and red peppers. I'm going to prep green beans. Then I have some uh, broccoli that is sitting around and I also got some cabbage. So I'm going to prep these veggies today. So here is the plan for today. I'm going to shred this small head of cabbage and I'm going to use this for making Manchurian balls for our uh, Manchurian gravy to go along with the Hakka noodles. Then I'm going to gather all the ingredients that go in pav bhaji. So I already have prepped uh, carrots. Oh. <laughs> I've already prepped cauliflower 
and I am I'm going to be prepping uh, green beans and uh, green peppers today. So I'm going to make a kit from all these ingredients and stick everything in the freezer bag and put it in my freezer. That way, uh, next week when I'm ready to make pav bhaji, all I have to do is grab that bag, put it in um, my pressure cooker, and make pav bhaji. Then I'm going to prep broccoli. I'm going to crush it along with some more of my cauliflower and other veggies um, and paneer to make cauliflower bite without any further ado let's get started i'm going to get my apron on i'm going to grab some coffee so that i have some energy to get through this meal prep and if you like content like this do stick around give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel let's get started before i share today's meal prep let me give you a quick look at what i prepared yesterday like i mentioned in my intro i prepped a bunch of veggies i started with spinach pick the spinach leaves rinse them in lemon juice water drain them spin dried them and then air dried in a tray and then stored them in a paper lined food safe plastic container next in line were mushrooms i removed their stems wiped them with a damp towel and stored them again in a paper lined food safe container the next in line were two heads of cauliflower these were these really lasted for good two weeks in the refrigerator before i could prep them uh, then i separated the florets did the same rinsing process uh, dried them once more then air dried them and then uh, transferred them into two portions so one portion was in the glass jars which was for immediate use and the other portion i transferred in a freezer safe bag for later use it's followed by portioning of sprouted mung beans i had soaked these the previous day and today morning i had put them for sprouting in a warm place i portioned them out in a glass container for immediate use and then in a freezer safe bag for use at a later time next i collected all the scraps from the prepared veggies like the mushroom stems spinach stems uh, onion peels and uh, celery leaves and ends i rinsed and air dried these and then stored them in a freezer safe bag i was going to use these to make my vegetable stock which i used it for making my red curry and broccoli soup the last veggie were the celery sticks i had thoroughly washed these under running water celery sticks have a lot of sand and dirt in them so it's very important to rinse them multiple times to make sure you're getting rid of all the gritty stuff in them chopped off the tops and the ends and saved them for stock put the stalks in the jar filled with filtered water and refrigerated them these are good for snacking with almond or peanut butter during the day for tonight's dinner i had prepared black and pinto beans for a cheesy tacos so stored two portions worth of it in freezer for later meals in addition to prepping the veggies i also prepped onions and cubed paneer blocks and froze those paneer pieces Moving on to today's meal prep. I began today's meal prep by shredding cabbage for making manchurian balls. Uh, very rarely I find cabbage head this small. Most of the times the cabbage head is so large that it literally lasts me for a month and by then no one wants to eat cabbage for a very long time. Anyways, back to our cabbage prep for manchurian balls. I sliced the cabbage in half, removed the top knob and the central core and then sliced it into wedges to fit in the chute of the food processor. Using the shredding attachment of the food processor i shredded the entire cabbage head emptied the shreds into a colander lined with a cotton cloth generously salted the cabbage shreds with pink himalayan salt massage the salt well into the shreds so that the cabbage shreds would release most of its water after about 30 minutes i wrung out as much water as possible from these uh, shreds. During this 30 minute wait period I started preparing for making the broccoli tikkas uh, but before that I quickly rinsed the shredding attachment because I was going to need it for uh, shredding paneer washed and prepped broccoli florets and then pulse blended these to form a coarse meal i used only the florets and not the stems for making the tikka i did save those for making shredded salad for a later use anyways uh, to this broccoli meal i added previously prepped cauliflower florets from my thursday's meal prep and pulse blended to get a uniform mixture transferred this mixture to a colander lined with a kitchen towel and salted it generously with pink himalaya 
Himalayan salt and let it hang around for a 30 to 40 minutes or so. In that time, I prepared the paneer by cutting it into uh, pieces so as to fit in the shoot of the food processor. I think I used about 450 or 500 grams of paneer to about 400 grams of broccoli florets and about 100 grams of cauliflower florets. Transfer the paneer shreds to a large mixing bowl, uh, then went back to the broccoli cauliflower mixture, wrung out as much water as possible uh, from them and added this ball to the bowl with paneer shreds. I think a I think I did a great job of wringing out the water because I had a very hard time uh, breaking this ball and getting everything mixed up with the paneer. After a lot of hard work, I was able to get it to somewhat uniform mixture. Then I seasoned it with salt, red chilli flakes, garlic powder and crushed kasuri methi. Then mixed everything thoroughly and started preparing potatoes to go in this mixture. As I mentioned in my intro, I had prepped these potatoes as part of my yesterday's meal prep. So I had boiled, peeled and cubed the potatoes and refrigerated them. Uh, these were a little bit on the coarse side for my liking. So I crushed them with my hands before seasoning it with salt, crushed kasuri methi and red chilli paste. After mixing the seasonings with the potatoes thoroughly using my hands, I added the seasoned cauliflower broccoli mixture to these potatoes and gave everything a mix uh, once more. I was adding this mixture in parts and was taste testing to make sure that the entire mixture was appropriately seasoned, then transferred uh, this mixture into another bowl and then using an ice cream scoop scooped out a portion of this uh, mixture into the palms of my hands and pressed it down to form a small patty or tikki uh, and then place the tikki in a larger plate. I was fully absorbed in the tikki shaping process and didn't realize that I had spent almost 40 minutes making these which in reality shouldn't have taken me more than 15 max 20 minutes to uh, shape. Oh well. Then I took about two to three tablespoons of cornstarch and then dipped each tikki into the cornstarch and coated it lightly on all of the sides, dusting off the excess and shaping if necessary. Oh my god, look at these tikkis. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, well, enough of self praise, Dipti. You need to keep going. Anyways, um, halfway through this process, I got my electrical griddle preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And by the time the griddle was hot, I had finished uh, coating all the tikkis with cornstarch, greased the griddle with ghee and placed the coated tikkis on top of it, coated the top surface of the tikki with ghee and cooked the bottom side for about 5 to 7 minutes, lifting slightly in between to check if all was going well. Uh, I got about 60 medium sized almost three inches wide and half an inch thick raw tikkis flipped the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom and after about five to seven minutes or so of cooking turned off the power transfer the tikkis to a glass container and let it cool next in line was the dabeli mixture or the dabeli filling so i started by heating a skillet on medium high heat to which i added a generous amount of oil i'm guessing about three to four tablespoons in total. To this, I added the remaining portion of previously prepared uh, boiled and coarsely crushed potatoes. After mixing these well with the oil, I seasoned them with salt and about two to three tablespoons of dabeli masala mixed everything well. However, the mixture was still a bit coarse for my liking. So I used the backside of a large spoon uh, to mash it further and to make it uh, into a much smoother consistency. I kept on mashing until I got the desired texture, then added finely chopped cilantro lemon juice one teaspoon of sugar and mixed everything thoroughly then transferred this to a glass container and let it cool before refrigerating cooking this way with an extra tablespoon of oil helps keep the mixture good for about five days in the refrigerator one more item checked off my to-do list for today dinner time was fast approaching we eat between 7 and 7 30 so i put meal prep on hold and enjoyed dinner with my family which was very simple pasta in marinara sauce along with some steamed broccoli on the side it was almost 8 pm before i resumed with my meal prep so back to making manchurian balls uh in my 
paratha added wrung out shredded cabbage uh, maybe about 4 or 5 cups of which to which i added uh, 1 tablespoon of grated ginger 2 tablespoons of crushed garlic 1 tablespoon of red chili flakes 2 tablespoons of garam masala 1 teaspoon of powdered garlic and 1 teaspoon of powdered black pepper mixed everything well and uh, kept on mixing until everything became a uniform mixture then added uh, cornstarch and all purpose flour or maida i started with about 2 tablespoons increments of each of these and ended up adding close to half cup of uh, cornstarch and half a cup of all-purpose flour then added some salt to adjust to taste and mixed everything well uh, to form a ball then roughly portioned out similar sized uh, pieces from this ball I got about 21 pieces in all then rolled each of these pieces into my hand and halfway through uh, shaping these into good firm shaped balls i started uh, heating my appe pan i was not going to fry these manchurian balls i was going to pan roast or cook them in my appe pan uh, by the time the pan was heated i was um, already done with shaping my uh, manchurian balls i added a few drops of oil to each slot of appe pan then added the manchurian balls uh, to each of these topped the balls with some more oil and turned up the heat from medium to medium high turned the manchurian balls around so that they could cook from all the sides and Top them once more with a few drops of oil. Uh, when they look like they were cooked from all the sides, remove them from the appe pan. Repeated the same process for the remaining uncooked Manchurian balls. It was close to 9 p.m. by the time I finished making these. I was on my last step of today's meal prep, which was prepping the veggies that I got yesterday. Uh, I started to prep with a bunch of green beans, uh, chopped off both the ends and then roughly chopped half of these for pav bhaji and transferred these to a large plate. Finally chopped the other half for making bhaji along with moong dal or sprouted moong beans as well. Uh, next in the line was six green peppers and two red peppers. This was the most dreading task for me. I just didn't want to do it. Uh, too much of slicing and dicing involved for several different dishes and a little bit confusing as well. Started with green peppers. After cutting the peppers along the sides and removing the core and the stem portion, I roughly chopped about two peppers for making pav bhaji kit. Cut the remaining four peppers in the same way that is from the sides and remove the core and the stem part. I cut two of these into long strips then dice them into medium dice. I am planning to use these medium dice for making besan pepper bhaji. Anyways, transfer these diced peppers to a freezer safe container and froze them for later use. Typically, I flash freeze pep prepped veggies but today I just wanted to get through so I skipped this step and put them directly in a freezer safe container. For the last two peppers I julian them into thin long strips. Initially my plan was to use all of these pepper strips along with the red peppers for making veg haka noodles but then I had a different idea. I remembered I had all ingredients to make Thai red curry so I decided to use half of these peppers for the red curry. So instead of finishing with prepping the green peppers I jumped the gun and started preparing the red peppers. Sometimes I get so excited with a new idea, you know, I just jump ahead to execute it. I cut each pepper into thin strips. Then I transferred one pepper worth of red pepper strips to the container with the green peppers. This will be used for Hakka noodles. Went back to the remaining green pepper and finished off cutting it into short strips. Then transferred these uh, red and green pepper strips to another paper lined container. These will be used for making Thai red curry. Last on the prep list was a lone carrot that I cut into chunks and transferred it to a plate with pav bhaji ingredients. And just so that I could show off, I put prepped cauliflower florets on this plate. I could have directly transferred them to a freezer safe bag but I wanted to be a bit fancy and show off. Anyways, all I did was transfer the ingredients from this plate to the bag and added uh, previously prepped onions. So when I'm ready to make pav bhaji, all I need to do is add potatoes and green peas and pressure cook all these vegetables along with masala 
to make pav bhaji in no time i will freeze this until i am ready to use that's it guys i made it through that's it in my next cooking video i will share with you a few meals that i prepared using these uh, prepped ingredients till then next time adios take care y'all if you like this video do give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so good night guys bye